I've been trying to avoid this. I don't want to get into political type stuff here on my channel. Um, it's kind of necessary at this point. I'm Steve Perry. This is Biblical Anarchy and Abortion is a touchy, touchy topic. Um, but it's in the news and some strange things are going on. What is the biblical position on abortion? A lot of times we take texts and use them to our advantage, whether or not the texts actually say that. And the fact of the matter is, the Bible completely ignores abortion. It just does. Um, you can go to Numbers 5. There's the jealousy law where it seems like Priests are being instructed on how to perform abortions. You can go to the law on two men who are in a fight and they injure a pregnant woman. And if they kill her, their life is required of them. And if the fetus is discharged, if the, the baby is, is born as a result of this fight, it seems like they only pay a fine. You can draw what you want to draw out of these texts. That's the nature of things. You can go to the calling of, I believe it's Jeremiah, where before, uh, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and you can read into that what you want. Um, you, can, you can read into all those things, but the fact of the matter is, if you go to the Didache, now, the Didache is a, a Christian writing, and this is late 1st century, early 2nd century, somewhere in that time frame. Basically, around the end of the New Testament writings, and perhaps uh, a little later than the New Testament writings, we get the Didache, which says in chapter 2, You shall not murder a child by abortion, nor kill that which is born. That is a clear anti-abortion statement in the Didache. There's no such statement anywhere in the Bible. It's just not there. And abortion is treated by the church today as if this is like public enemy number one for God. He's appalled by abortion. He, you know, it's, it's this terrible thing that somehow he forgot to mention, right? Now, I think that a logical reading of the Bible would draw a person to the conclusion that abortion is not optimal, okay? At the very least, it's, it's not the best case scenario. Um, I personally would like to live in a world where there were no abortions, but I would like to live in that world because there were viable alternatives and because women aren't raped, because children aren't abused by relatives. I'd like to live in a world where no abortion is necessary, where a woman isn't having to choose between her life and the life of the child, where, where there's no disease that that will cause a child to be born with a prognosis of one month of survival. Uh, these terrible things that women have to face. And a lot of times we forget those things, right? These, these tough decisions that women have to make when it, when it comes to having the baby. You know, the baby's going to live a month and then die. Like, do I put my family through that? Do I put the child through that? Do I, you know, is, is the baby going to be suffering for that one month that it lives? Is it going to be in pain, agony, you know? These are tough decisions, and I, I don't know if you notice or not, but I'm not a woman. I don't have to, uh, I don't have to make these decisions. I, I, I'm not in that position. And so when people ask my position on abortion, that's between the woman and her doctor. That's my view on it. Yeah, I don't, I don't want there to be, a, you know, the whole abortion on demand thing and all this. No, I don't want that. But the, another problem we run into is we say, like, Ohio has a fetal heartbeat, right? So after six weeks, I believe it is, or um, you can't get an abortion. Well, the problem you run into with laws like that is when you put this time frame in place and say, well, 
up until this time you can have one, but not after that. Um, what are we doing? We are, we are putting women, sorry about that, we are putting women in this position where it, it, it's like you have to make this choice by this time. It, it seems to me like this is going to increase the likelihood of an abortion where women are under the crunch and maybe if they had more time, right, they might make a different decision. I just, I, I, I think these laws are bad ideas, but that's not the point of this video. Um... I stumbled across this article that popped up in my feed. The right denied the story of a 10-year-old getting an abortion. It only gets worse. And this goes through multiple outlets um, that claim this 10-year-old girl in Ohio who had to go to Indiana to get an abortion. She was raped by a 27-year-old man. He's now been charged in the rape. And Allie Beth Stuckey on YouTube was one of the ones, and I, I, I'm I'm not gonna play her nonsense, okay? I'm not even gonna put her videos up there. This this is a this woman is an extremist, okay? You, you want to talk about if if you live in Afghanistan, you got to deal with the Taliban, and if you live in America, you got to deal with the Taliban, okay? It, 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 the 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 woman. I, you know what? She's nuts. There's no other way to put it. Um, she put up this video, the suspicious 10-year-old who needs an abortion with a stamp on it that says debunked, right? Well, it turns out it's a true story. And when you go through her videos, this is what scares a lot of people. When you go through her videos, um, starting with uh, Roe v. Wade overturned, my reactions and thoughts is three weeks ago. Then good riddance, Roe v. Wade. Here's what's next. Yes, this is not to the extremists, to the, the Christian extremists. This isn't where it ends, folks. When, when people say, well, they're going to come after contraceptives, they're going to come after gay marriage, um, and you look at Clarence Thomas's opinion, they're justified in saying these things. Now, are they going to successfully come after these things? No, I, I, folks, this... I, I hate to say this because I said the same thing about Roe v. Wade. This is an extremist wing, not just of the Republican Party, but of the church. And the reason why I feel comfortable doing this video is because I honestly think that if you're a Christian watching this video, at least 75% of you are sitting there saying, you know what, this 10-year-old girl that was raped should not be forced to have the baby, right? I would think... 70, 75% of you is anyways. The problem is, though, if you take the number who will say it publicly, I'm just talking about what they'll, what they'll say in their head watching a video. Like, this girl shouldn't be forced to have a baby. How many of you will say it publicly? Well, you're probably looking more like 40 to 50%. But good riddance, Roe v. Wade, here's what's next. That's that's really the problem you're looking at here. And it's, I mean, to sit here and go after this this story, like here, here's a 10-year-old girl who to, has to go through all this, and now she's got to deal with this hack, this nut job, Allie, J. Stuck, Allie Beth Stuckey, who, who, who's coming after claiming she doesn't exist, claiming she doesn't have the problem. I mean, the what are we seriously getting to? We have reached a point in this country where Jewish organizations are considering suing over, <laughs> over extremist Christian interpretation of their own tax, folks. It, it's, it's nuts. This is insane. There are better ways to go about this. And the better ways to go about this, there are organizations that you can donate to who help place unwanted pregnancies. They help, play, they help the women to have the baby, place it in a home at no cost to the mother. You know, a lot of the expenses are covered. Um, they, they help them find placement, etc. And th this is really the way to go. I, it, it's a win-win where... We're helping where help can be given. And in cases like this, where a 10 year old, you, do you honestly want a 10 year old girl having to spend her entire life thinking about a child she has out there that she doesn't know that, 
raped by a 27 year old man i mean is this is this seriously like you sit here and you think well this is what god wants seriously it it make it 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 makes me wonder sometimes if you've even read the Bible or if you're simply using the Bible as a prop for your extremist political views, you know? And again, I didn't want to get into politics on this channel, but come on, folks, this is nuts. This is insanity. I just, you go through the list uh, to the Christians not selling Roe v. Wade's overturning. Um, Like, I don't know what to tell you. This is, for for some reason, and of course you got to have the dark truth of transgender activism, right? Like, uh, we <laughs> we can't have a, have a YouTube page without attacking the LGBTQs as well. I mean, this is, it, 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 I think the scary thing really for most people is the fact that we've reached a point where for some reason it seems like Suddenly, the church thinks, well, we found some level of acceptance where we can just take the mask off and, and reveal who we are. And it's not pretty. It is not pretty. And I know there, there have to be Christians out there. Well, I know some, okay, that are bothered by this case with the 10-year-old and her being attacked, right? She's a rape victim. She has to deal with that. Now she needs an abortion. God knows how difficult that has to be for her. But on top of that, she's got these right-wing nut jobs like Tucker Carlson and, and Ali Beth Stuckey who are out here claiming she doesn't exist, attacking her, you know? At some point, you got to stop, folks. You cannot claim to be pro-life while trying while putting a 10-year-old girl through this stuff, right? This is why, you know, Mike Winger did a video talking about, you know, people on the left will accuse people on the right of being pro-life only up to the point where the baby is born. Well, look at this. This is a 10-year-old girl. This is a child. How pro-life are you when you're attacking this girl for being a rape victim? Claiming that she's not. Like, all, all, all these terrible things that people have said. You know, God knows if the girl's going to sue... Uh, people like Allie Beth here, Tucker Carlson, you know, it, it, it's sad. Wake up. We're dealing with real issues and real people here. And you, you can have your political views. And if you want to limit abortions and make abortions rare and unusual, that's admirable. But when you sit here and, and do this and treat people this way in the name of your religion... Makes me wonder what your religion's all about. Wake up, people. We got to do better. I'm Steve Perry. This is Biblical Anarchy. If you disagree with me, God help me, leave a comment down below and I'll try to be nice. But if you enjoy the video, you can give it a thumbs up, share it on social media, subscribe to the channel. Whatever you do, don't just sit there. Do something and forget the video. Do something for... Girls like this, young girls like this who go through rape, who go through incest, and really need your support at this point in time. They really do. God bless these girls. Do something for them.